Hey, I'm going to go through uh, tanning a red fox using the alum based method. Uh, it's uh, aluminum sulfate. Um, and I talk about where you can pick up the ingredients and that stuff in the video. Uh, the only thing I want to say is if you do this, uh, I want to recommend that you do just one slight thing different than what the video has me doing. And that's just to dry the fur completely. Uh, so flesh it thoroughly and dry it thoroughly before submersing it into the solution that I, I'll give you the ingredients for. I did not do that in this video, and it still turned out fine. It's a good finished product, but I think it would be just a little bit better uh, and certainly a little bit quicker if you did uh, let it dry thoroughly all the way through. But nonetheless, it turns out just fine, so I hope you enjoy the video, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like here finished. At the end of video, at the end of the video as well. So uh, hopefully it's helpful. And uh, yep, good luck out there. Yeah, see ya. Hey guys, uh, there were a few questions about tanning, so I thought I'd uh, just post this quick picture of this video here, uh, just show you what I'm doing. Uh, it's the alum-based method. Uh, so you got to get what's called alum. It's aluminum sulfate. But here's the recipe. Um, I just use this little cup here for everything. It's uh, got, you get a five gallon bucket, put three gallons of water in it, one cup of non-iodized salt, and that's right next to the normal salt, but non-iodized salt is what you want, one cup, and two and a half cups of alum, or aluminum sulfate. And alum you can get in the spice rack, it's a preservative, they use it for, uh, not cannon, but uh, for uh, uh, pickling, uh, but it's alum. And it's usually on the top left-hand side because it begins with A, <laughs> so alum. Uh, you can also go to the garden center or uh, Agway or something like that, and you get them in big bags. It's a lot cheaper if you're going to do uh, bulk. That's what I do. I get a big bag from them. But the gardening centers had them, too. They're like a, it's like a fertilizer as well. And then the last thing is washing soda. And you use two-thirds cup washing soda. And a washing soda is over in the laundry aisle where you get your uh, laundry detergent and stuff. I use Arm & Hammer brand washing soda. Uh, so all I do is I mix this whole uh, thing together, make a little solution in a five gallon bucket, and I stir it. I usually let it dissolve real good, like overnight. And uh, then I take my fox fur and I wash it, make sure it's nice and clean. I flesh it, so I get the, the leather nice and clean as well. And then I take my fox fur and I put it into the solution. Uh, I let it drip dry, of course, first, just to get rid of some of the water. And then I put it in the solution for two weeks. And then you use a wooden rod of some sort, or a stir stick, a paint stir, or something. Just as long as it's wooden, that's important. You don't want to get black marks on it. That's something with aluminum sulfate. I think it has a chemical reaction or something. But you can see what I'm using. It's just a paint roller extension rod here. Um, works good. And the fox fur goes into the solution for two weeks. And you stir it once daily. Or more if you want. It doesn't hurt. You can't over stir it. But just make sure you stir it once each day. And uh, then you take it out of the solution and you do what it's doing right now. So I'm fast forwarding to where I'm at right now. Fox fur is out. It's hanging. It's going to drip dry for a few minutes here. And I have another bucket over here to my left. I'm going to take the fox down. I'm going to rinse it out. So I'm going to rinse out all that, you know, the, the stuff that could create odor and stuff. So... After I'm done tanning this, I don't want it to smell, you know what I mean? So I'm going to let this drip dry for just a little bit, and I'm going to rinse it in my bucket. And at that point, I'll let it drip dry again overnight. So before I work the leather, I want to make sure that it's, it's fairly dry, but I still need the leather to be um, um, malleable, I guess is the word. It's got to be able to move. So while I'm working the leather while it dries it has to be able to be to move. It's got to be able to be worked. So, uh, But I'll come back on. I'll show you where I'm at then. So what I'm doing, I'm pinching a line like right here, and then I work it. And then what I do is I roll it about a quarter inch to a half inch, and then I work it again. 
I do that down about three or four inches across and I just keep on doing that working and working and working and rolling until I get all the way around the pelt and I'll have that swath kind of covered so I got the face done it's looking pretty good nice and white a lot of shards and stuff on it which I'll clean up later uh, I have down to about right here you can see where I have done down to right about there and then from there down still needs done so you see the difference nice and dark there nice and white up there so you got that look down here now the other thing is in the back it's a little bit thicker in the leather so take your time when you're working the thicker parts of the leather like on the face on the back and you'll find at the belly especially down here it gets done really fast uh, you can actually do most of this just by hand you can just pull on it and kind of wiggle it fox fur especially is a thin leather so it's fairly easy to do but that's where I'm at so far. I'll keep checking in with you. Hey, welcome back. I just took my fox down off the, the hanger there so it's drying. And uh, you can see it's kind of got this uh, almost like the papery feel that you feel whenever you normally dry them but this is tan so it's going to come out a little tougher it's a little thicker it's a little more difficult to dry so it's still got a little bit of moisture in it not much but just a little bit and you can feel that the legs are pretty crispy there it's almost got like a a dusty appearance on it there now what you want uh and you can see the, the ears are real crispy okay so uh you can put something uh in the, the real crispy spots if you want to when you're working it um some leather conditioning stuff but i'll show you what we're going to end up doing i'll see if that comes up on the on the on the video here and i'm just using my phone so it's not great but you end up with these patches where it's it's still a little damp and these patches that are still real white in here and if you watch whenever i uh, pull them when i separate them you'll see the fibers kind of break up It's hard to make out probably, but let me work it just a little bit and you'll see kind of. It makes like a, a white patch right in there. Uh, this in here should work. If you watch right here where it's real dark, as I pull it apart, I kind of push my thumb in the back there. You can kind of see how it's breaking up. And then I'll work it real good. And it turns it like white kind of so it's breaking up those fibers is what it's doing and if you keep doing that all the way around the fur uh, right down to the edges you end up with a fur that's nice and soft and plush you know and that's kind of what we go for is we want it to be uh, nice if you will to the touch but you do that all over you can do it with your hands like I was just doing it or you can work it over something really hard like I showed you on the blade there and I'll do a video of that as well but that's kind of what we're looking at you want to take that dark fibers and work them and get them broken up kind of so it changes from that dusty or the the, the brown tan look and it turns it into that dusty look kind of but you just work it kind of crump it roll it over something hard there and get it working until it looks like I just showed you in the video to where it turns that soft white so it's not much to it this is work this is where the work comes in though uh, but take your time with it because it's probably one of the more important parts of what you're doing all right I'll show you what I'm doing on the beam then I have them on the, the flesh and beam I remove the cartilage out of the ears and you can look online how to do that uh, but then I sew them uh, right down the, the kind of like the front there where the uh, so this is the face of course so here in the front here where all the cartilage was that's removed and then all you have is leather. So now I like to fold that and sew it together real tight. We use a nylon uh, sewing thread and real tight up to a nice point because I think this final product, you know, whenever you have them all done here when he's all tanned up and everything, he looks real nice. Hey, this is my last video. It's all finished up. I just thought I'd show a quick picture of it. Uh, it's my finished tanned red fox uh, all the way from head to toe and that's fur on feet sewed shut and uh you know it's all dried up it's it's been good this is probably about uh i don't know four weeks since the last video was shot there 
But uh, that's how the inside turned out. All real nice and kind of pliable. It's hard to tell you what it feels like, but by me rubbing my hands on it and rolling it around, you kind of get an idea. It's not hard, but it ain't exactly a silk either. It is leather, um, but uh, Fox is a real thin leather, so it actually turns out pretty nice, I think. It gets a real nice white look with the alum based thing, but uh, that's kind of how it is. I got the, the tail split and tanned all the way down as well, so uh, some folks like to look at that, but the, the tail's all split all the way down to the very tip there, and that's turned out real nice. Um, I, uh, in the process of breaking the fur and stuff, I, uh, I, the only spot that I had problems was right underneath this arm right here. I had a little fur pull. So that, uh, I think probably the best thing to do, and uh, this is all hindsight and stuff because I'm still learning the process too, but I think the best thing to do would be uh, to dry the fur fully. Just uh, flesh it real good, let it dry totally, and then do the process. I said earlier in the video you could do that that way if you wanted to. If I went back, if I was doing it again, that's probably what I would do. I would dry it out. 100% before actually dipping it into the solution but uh, you know even just uh, when it was wet and it went into the solution I let it stay in there for two weeks if it was dry and you did everything the same way I just said it it'd just be that much better I guess um, but real pretty fox fur I'm real happy with how it turned out I'm gonna give this to my uh, father-in-law and it's gonna hang on uh, the wall up there at the, the hunting camp and well, that's that. There's not much to it. It's just a real simple process there. and You know, hope you enjoyed it. So, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Good luck.